Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Fat Dad Fishing Stream. My name is Rich, and I am the resident original Fat Dad for Fat Dad Fishing. Tonight is going to be an awesome stream. Um, we're going to be talking about one of the oldest, uh, more traditional lures out there. One of the lures that you can pretty much catch anything on, and that is a bucktail. So tonight I am being joined by Ed, the owner of Captain Hank's Tackle. Ed, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Rich. How are you? Good, good. Thank you so much for uh, for agreeing to spend some time with us tonight. I uh, really appreciate it. I'm pretty excited about this conversation. So before we get started, um, really going into bucktails and everything like that, um, why don't you give everyone just an overview of you, what kind of fishing do you do, and a little bit about how Captain Hanks got started. So uh, like most people, I started fishing with my dad is at a young age, um, you know, fresh, mostly freshwater. Um, he used to dabble in saltwater stuff. Um, recently, we're both getting into it a lot more, um, and it's mostly back bay stuff, um, fluke, striper, occasional weak fish when we can find them, um, stuff like that. Um, Captain Hanks uh, actually kind of started as a little bit of a joke. Um, it was a business, you know, born of COVID. Uh, me and a good friend were, you know, looking around and, um, we, we did a lot. We do a lot of fishing together still. Um, and we just got tired of buying stuff that didn't really perform. Um, you know, a lot of the big name stuff, you, you do one drift and there's no paint left. Um, you know, so we, we decided to, to start that and, uh, you know, here and we are today <laughs> trying to, trying to make the best product we can. Yeah. And, and I think that's, you know, that's a, a story that's, that we're hearing more and more often, right. Um, a lot of businesses, uh, born of, of the COVID and the pandemic and everything like that. Andrew, th hello, Andrew. Andrew's in the chat right now. Um, yeah, um, as, as we jump into this, let me just say real quick, for those that are on the live stream, uh, if you have any questions, any feedback, anything you want to talk about, put it right in the, in the live chat. And for those that are watching the replay later, put them in the comments. Um, I go through and answer every single comment on all of the videos and I would have a direct line to Ed. So if you have questions specifically for him, I'm happy to reach out and he'll be happy to pass an answer back through me to you. Uh, we'll also go through uh, Ed's contact information during this stream. So if you wanna contact him directly and circumvent me, absolutely you can do that as well. So I uh, just wanna start off with that and, and Andrew, welcome. Thanks for thanks for joining us tonight. Um, so, so let's kind of roll into um, a little bit about bucktails. Um, I wanna make sure that we talk about flounder um, and, and flounder jigs because that is really the 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 heart of what most of my subscribers uh really want to fish for so so let's talk a little bit about the the uh the bucktails for flounder um uh and, and as we roll into that let's let's start off first of all by going into the different types of bucktails um you know the the different types of variety that are out there and, and what you typically use and why i mean the What's the word I'm trying to say? I mean, there's there's so many different uh, styles and jig head types and colors. And, you know, it's a lot of personal preference. Um, you know, like my, I'll show you one. Like this this year, this was my color. This is a, was a teal and a, it's got a teal belly with a, with a uh, chartreuse um, top. That was, that was my go-to pattern. Um, it, I think a lot of it has to do with confidence and, and, you know, what guys are doing well with. Um, it's, it's, it's very, there's not a one size fits all. It's, it's definitely very angler dependent and even conditions, you know, certain colors are going to show up better in dirtier water, clear water. You know. Yeah. And, and I think it's interesting, you know, a lot of people take the bucktail as, um, you know, I don't think people realize the power of the bucktail, right? I mean, there are so many different kinds. And what I typically use is the ball jig, uh, the jig, the ball head, um, which is which is more, you know, it's the round, round head right there. Um, I, I typically use that and it's more for, you know, in my mind, it's the best for all around and specifically for vertical jigging. Um, and, uh, you know, it also works really well with casting out, but there are a lot of different types and a lot of them you don't actually see so much in the mid Atlantic to Northeast, like the skimmer or the flathead. Um, I actually don't even have one that I can show uh, anybody right now, but the, the skimmer is one that is typically used for fishing flats, really shallow water. And it's just a flat jig head 
um, with the bucktail on it. And it, it's really good for, for pulling it over the shallow water. Uh, the minnow head is a popular one because of spro. You know, that's what everyone, a lot of people actually call them spro heads uh, now, but the, it's, it's the minnow head. It's, it's another really good one for deep water jigging. I know you make those. Um, mm -hmm. Smiling Bill which is uh, that that's like the, the original old that's man. The, well, that's, that's the quintessential like surf caster, you know, yep. most guys you see them, you know, up in uh, like Sandy hook and, and on the beaches, that's what they're throwing. That's yep. just the, the, the OG. Huge in New York, um, mm -hmm. you know, for not just for flounder, but, but for striper uh, I, that, that to me is the, uh, the go-to and, and, I don't know. I mean, it's really good for the surf. It's good for the deep retrieves, the way that it's set up. Um, I just, I, I, I just like the way it looks um, and I get the hits, you know, I think, I think it has a, a little bit to do with the red, uh, the red mouth. Um, I know, think, I think more so with, with those, with the smile and bills, I think it's actually the V that's cut in the, in the head of it. I think it, when the water hits it, it it'll want to move, um, you know, on your retrieve. I think that has a lot to do with it. Well, maybe that's it. I, you know, I, I, what I should do is, is use it a little bit more on the kayak and on the boat. Um, you know, but I definitely use it in surf, love it for striped bass. Um, and then you have a whole bunch of other things. You have the wobble heads, you have the mushrooms, you got the bullets, the standups, the footballs, you know, all of those different ones. Um, what are the ones that you specifically, um, really focus on for your market right now? What's the most popular? Um, right now, the most popular is actually, um, it's really not even a uh, bucktail. It's more so a ball, just a standard ball jig. A lot of the offshore guys this time of year. I mean, now that the season's closed, um, a lot of guys start bucktail as light as they can uh, inshore, you know, in bays and stuff like that. And then as the fish move offshore, they they start changing their patterns and what they're throwing. Um, beginning, it, it's really you're you know season dependent um, on on what guys are wanting. Um, like I said, early season, they're, they're using lightweight, three-quarter, three-eighths, small stuff, you know, trying to get them as light as they can just to, to get a strike. And then, like I said, as as the season moves on, they'll up their weight, they'll up, you know, they'll change change colors. Like I said before, the, the water color, uh, clarity, it's got a lot to do with it. Yeah, it's a, it's in a, like in the spring, right? You got the small three-eighths, maybe a half ounce in the back. Um, you're putting the smallest, I don't even know what size they are. are they three inch, four inch, the four inch gulp. Yeah. Little there. Four inchers. Yeah. Little four inch. <laughs> and, and by the end of the season, you got a whole container of those things and all you're throwing are five and six inches, you know, like yeah, for example, biggest, I was, yeah, I was out the, uh, yesterday actually trying to scare something up in the wind, you know, going big and with the six inch on, on the back and, uh, you know, it, it it's what they're looking for, right? And and it's what we're looking for because let's be honest, at the beginning of the season, most of us, myself included, you just want to go out, you want to get some tight lines, you want to get some fish on. Um, but as the season goes on, you become less about numbers, they becomes less important. It's like, you know what, I want one fish and I want it to be a plus twenty-five, right? Or mm -hmm. something like that. And so you're looking for the bigger baits and and the and the bigger fish that way. Um, so so we've got the different styles. Um like I said, I use the round head, but there's also another part of the jig head itself, right? So, so the bucktail is broken down into to different components. Um, mm -hmm. You've got the jig is is the uh, the backbone. Of, well, really, it's the head, the hook, right? And then the hook, you have the hook the, is key. Yeah, the hook is a big thing, um, and then you have the the bucktail, which is what makes it a bucktail, and then you have the extras, right? But one yep. thing that that I have found um, interesting is people don't necessarily think about the angle of the hook eye uh, or the jig right. eye on there. So, you know, they're, they're typically either 90 degrees or a 45 or a 60 degree. Um, you know, what, what are you seeing with that as far as what people are looking for? Um, it's again, it's on angler dependent. The most common thing like we're doing is the, with the ball jigs. Um, I have some right here. Of course I didn't get the minnow head, um, but the angle of the hook eye and where it protrudes you know, in relation to the jig itself um, has a lot to do with how your jig is going to perform underwater. And you got to remember we're, you know, we're on land, we're in air, you know, this is, there's really no forces acting on this when it's underwater, you have currents, you have, you know, fish, other fish, you have, you know, things that are, that are acting on it. Um, my biggest thing is with, with these, um, with the ball heads is the angle of, 
the you know of the hook. So when your line is tied on, <clears throat> this will keep your jig. You know, imagine my hand being um, the ground. You know, it's keeping that your line wants to be vertical. So it's trying to keep that hook point up. Um, so when a fish comes in and grabs it, um, with the minnow heads, I, of course I didn't bring one. Um, there's a thousand outside, but yeah. none in here. <laughs> um, with the minnow heads, it actually, the, the weight, um, of the jig head is actually further forward, um, past the hook eye. So what it's going to do is it's going to create a nose heavy jig, um, it will help the, you know, the hook to stand up, but it will also, you know, hit the ground um, and it will cause it to, you know, want to, want to rotate. And mm -hmm. um, I've I found that since now, when I, when I first started making jigs, um, I was a spro guy. That's all I used before I really started, um, you know, getting into it. And what I would, what I found switching to the ball head, um, it, it keeps the, the, the the it's much cleaner um doesn't pick up a lot of seaweed it doesn't pick up a lot of trash it's it's easier to shed you know that stuff on the bottom kind of swims through it a little bit better than versus that you know weight forward of the of the uh, minnow head right and i you know i i'll say i use spro i, I actually for most of my life used a uh, a custom bucktail that was made out of god i can't even remember the name tackle shop in cape may um, Jim's, Jim's bait and tackle. There were some custom ones down there and I'm talking over 40 years, you know, growing up, that's what we got. Um, and then I was tying my own for a while. Um, but I wasn't, I wasn't making the jigs, right. I was just using old bucktails that I got from Jim's and they get beaten up because I used to go for bluefish mostly and, uh, turn around and, and I would just tie them myself to just put them in the fly tying vice and, and start tying them up. So I've, I've done a lot of experimenting with that. Um, but Spro, then I went to Spro because then I got lazy and I said, I'm not going to do this anymore. Um, so I just went out and, you know, start making a little bit of money after you're out of college. And now I'm, now I'm buying tackle and I'm buying Spro. Um, actually, Spro came after that, but um, there were a couple other brands in there as well. I think it's a decent, it's a decent jig, but it's not, I, don't, I, I, I use it as a backup right? It's my emergency mm -hmm. one if I'm out of everything else or if I'm losing everything. So for an example, uh, just so people know, full disclosure, yesterday I was out fishing. Um, I had picked up uh, on Friday a whole bunch of new jigs here from Ed and I lost four. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I threw a spro on. I threw a spro on and lost that. Um, it was a bad day for me. Uh, and I would just say I was being followed by a seal. It is way too early in September to be followed by seals. That's usually a midwinter thing, but yeah, they were following that's me on the kayak. Uh, it was brutal, but yeah, so I use a, that's when I use a spro or if I'm on really heavy structure, um, and I'm going to lose something. I, I don't want to necessarily lose all of my good jigs. Um, if I'm, if I'm really testing the heavy structure, like a wreck, right. Um, you know, I was going to do a tournament last weekend. It was canceled and we were going to be hitting some wrecks and I have a whole bunch of, of cheap jigs for on the wreck and then to switch out to the better jigs alongside the wreck. So I'm not necessarily on that structure, but, um, I use the deep, the, uh, the, the minnows, the minnow heads are really good for, for wreck fishing, I think, because it's a more vertical presentation when you're vertical jigging. Um, the key is you just have to keep a lot of weight on there so that you don't have any scope in that on that structure. So you can pull it straight up, straight down uh, as you're going over it. Uh, but yeah, so, you know, one thing about the angles that I think people should keep in mind is, and this is a difference between Southern fishing, I'm talking Southern, you know, Southeast United States, Florida, North Carolina, Virginia, um, versus mid Atlantic to Northern, um, you know, for flounder specifically, they're casting to get their flounder there. They're not vertical jigging like we are because they're typically catching these things in less than six feet of water, often in, in, in a foot of water. So they're actually tossing it out and they're using the skimmer heads. In that case, I think it's important for people to understand you should look for something that has that, that hook further forward, right? You want that angle so it pulls it straighter through the water. If you use a spro minnow head as an example, because that's what people are gonna be familiar with, and you're casting that, it is not going to retrieve as well. You don't want to necessarily troll with that either. Now, some of them you'll see will actually have two eyes on it, right? So you have the one up here and then you have one up front. 
If you're going to be casting it out and retrieving it, use the one out front so it pulls it flatter in the water across. If you're going to be uh, jigging it, then you use this one right here, and that'll be pulling it this way so it gives you this more action in this direction. And I think people don't realize that. Um, and quite often, I've seen people on the beach that are just using the vertical, uh, the vertical eye. You know, it doesn't make as much sense. Um, but it's something that I, I don't think a lot of people know. You know, so if you're going to be ca casting it out, look for that skimmer type of skimmer type of head. Uh, if you're going really shallow, look for that that offset eye hook uh, up further towards the front, so you have the, the the weight behind it. So you're pulling it a little little more steady. Look for like a bullet head, something like that. Um, you, you'll get a much better better presentation on that. W would you agree with that, or do you have different thoughts on it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, not for nothing, the hook in the water is better than not. Um, but when you can, yep. you know, it, we have, you know, everything's available to put you on the best tackle possible for the situation. So it's definitely worth it to do a little bit of research and, and figure out the type of fishing you're going to be doing and, and match your gear to, you know, what, what you're going to be doing. Right, right. Uh, and it's funny, Don, uh, Don Mace in the chat just jumped in. Hey, Don, uh, Don was actually who I was going to go out on the tournament with. Uh, so he was going to see all, the, all those cheap spurs that I was bringing. Um, <laughs> and actually had, uh, just so people know, Ed made a whole bunch of um, three ounce bucktails for, for Don and I to test out uh, over the weekend as well. Just just didn't happen. Uh, not great weather uh, for offshore, definitely. Uh, but yeah, we'll be out in the 90 foot next year. <laughs> Um, yeah, so let's go into So, um, a big thing about bucktails, um, man, we could talk about presentation and I, I was kind of thinking, let's kind of roll into that, but let's really talk about the construction first, right? So there's different, you know, you can make bucktails a million different ways, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, a lot of people, and, and it depends, you know, in my opinion on the species, right? So to me, um, the regular generic, like I, I keep holding these up. These are the, these are Captain Hanks right here. These are flounder, uh, bucktails. They, they are not the same as what, and I don't know if people pick up on why, but they're not the same as what you're getting for Spro. And they are not the same bucktails that I would use if I'm fishing for striped bass, um, you know, starting here in a couple of weeks. And there, there are some reasons for that. So are there, are there any things that you look to do with the different particular bucktails when you're making them for, you know, the customers that really don't ask for anything custom, they just say, Hey, I'm fishing for this species. Um, you know, I need it. I need some bucktails. Um, I mean, typically the average, most of my guys, um, that are, that are buying from us are, um, fluke guys. Um, I do have some guys, some striper guys and stuff like that. Um, but the average bucktail I will tie, um, I can show you this one. This one's a pretty good example. Um, you want to tie it. Um, you want to have fur, you know, all the way around evenly. Um, and, you know, when this stuff gets wet, it's going to streamline down and it's it's going to mimic a bait fish. Um, you know, that's why, you know, the bucktail, is. you don't even, you can throw a bucktail with nothing on it and still catch fish because yep. it, it emulates, you know, bait fish. Um, so the, the average bucktails is going to be tied, um, with fur all the way around evenly. Um, and that way guys, you know, I've seen guys with scissors out on the jetties, trimming them up, cutting hair off. You can play with the sink rate. You can do, um, you know, you can change the action of the bait. There's a lot you can do with a bucktail. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're very universal. They're very universal. And, and, um, you know, what's the word? Um, yeah, just, just universal. They're they're They'll catch anything. There's, there's not much in the in the bay that'll that won't hit on a bucktail. You know, it, it's funny if you go down. Everybody has their confidence lure, right? Uh, but what's interesting is there are two lures that really haven't changed much over time. There's the spoon, and then there's the bucktail. Mm -hmm. And you could you could essentially say the same list. Maybe the spoon might have caught more, but I, I mean I can tell you personally. Uh, I have used as a primary um, as, as a primary lure for flounder, uh, for weak fish, bluefish, striped bass, tuna, mahi mahi, um, Spanish mackerel, false albacore. I, I mean, we could 
did I say tuna? Sharks, shark. When you see sharks on the top, you throw a bucktail at them. They will absolutely mako sharks. I've caught several, many. I won't even say several. Many dozens of mako sharks. Uh, now this was yeah. years ago, uh, back in the eighties, but it was all on bucktails. Uh, and, and I to, to touch on that. Um, when I started uh, tying the bucktails and learning about them, uh, there's a company that that really made them, put them on the map, um, was this upper men's company. And they were actually in Atlantic City, which is, you know, 15 minutes from here. Um, they were so, the bucktails were so um, efficient that the U.S. Navy has them in their survival kits. They started in World War II and they still right. have them to this day. You know, for guys that get stranded or whatever, they have a way to, to catch something. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it's proven. And anybody who's fished multiple species, um, if you have to go with just one lure, I would always bring the bucktail. I mean, it's huge in Australia. It's huge here. I mean, it's huge all over the world. I think it's some of the best places to go fishing and, and the bucktail is there. Now, when you talk about the construction, you know, the, the, I guess the thing that really makes it a bucktail is you're using bucktail on there you know you have the silicone mm -hmm. skirts they're not actually bucktails they they mimic them somewhat but they don't have the same action right the, those large silicone skirts they have good action but they don't have the same action um so your base your basic one is you're going even all the way around it right that's your general mm -hmm. all-around all-purpose bucktail then yep yeah and all purpose is going to be hair tied all the way around you know, you want to keep it even so the action, it doesn't, you know, tend to favor one side or the other. Or, um, you know, you as the angler will will put that action into it and it's not it won't do it on its own. Right. Um, you know, and, and there are a couple of things to consider. Um, let's see. It's actually uh, Eric Cohen, Cohen is asking thoughts on effect in this area timing for a jig head with hair, meaning the bucktail plus gulp versus a plain jig head with just the gulp why, when, and where would you use one over the other for fluke? And that, that's an interesting question. It kind of goes to what I was saying about the different types of bucktails. Um, and, and, you know, the all around bucktail that you're talking about with the even bucktail on there. Now, you know, this because we've talked at length about it. Um, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't like that for fluke at all. Um, I think it's too much. You think of the, the construction of their mouth. Um, I spent years just buying spros and buying other things and then cutting them myself. Like you said, that you see people on the beach doing all the time to shape it to the way that they like it. So look at this one. It's very sparse. It is not even, look, see how his flared out. You want to hold your, your standard one up there. Look at that. This one. Then, now, mind you, this one is well used. This was, right. <laughs> this has seen many, many a fish. So it's still, it's a little ratty, but. It's a little ratty, but this one's brand new. This one actually hasn't hit the water yet. Um, but you can see how, how sparse it is from the bottom and the top. So it's thinner. Mm -hmm. It has a thinner profile, which, which in my opinion and in my experience fits the mouth of the fluke better right? They don't have all that hair to go through. They don't have, you know, they have a smaller, their mouth gets big when they're, when it's wide open, but when it's closing, you want as much of this hook in that mouth as possible. And I don't want them snipping back here, right? I don't want them grabbing all that. I want this all compact in the water. So it's really nice and streamlined. And I want them grabbing that hook and getting it in their mouth. So that's why I like these. Um, and we could talk a little bit in a little bit about, you know, kind of what we're doing together here, but um, and then with a little bit of flash on the side, just for a little bit of color. Um, but, to, but to Eric's question, my thought is I would use the plain jig head with the gulp. Um, if I, if I, if the bucktail is too big, right. It just, it, to me, it makes it easier for them to grab. Um, now when I would use more bulk, um, two things, if I'm not using a gulp, um, because people do fish bucktails without anything. They just put pro cure on it or, you know, a squid strip in that case. Um, you know, I would use a bucktail with feathers to give it a little bit more volume to make it look a little bit more like a bait fish. Um, but if it, if the water is murky, you want it to move the water, right? You need the vibrations out there. So it hits the lateral mm -hmm. line so that they can sense that it's there. If they, even if they can't see it. So that's when I'm using like the bigger bucktails. If it's a little bit of murky water now, Mid-Atlantic and North is pretty much all murky, right? Or it's at least dirty, you know? Um, <laughs> Although last year we had a couple a couple really nice days where it, it looked kind of Caribbean out there. Yeah, we, we've had, we have had a few of those. 
generally speaking, though, um, you know, especially when you compare it to Florida and North Carolina, which is a lot cleaner, it's a lot clearer. Um, you know, I was down in North Carolina and I'm seeing eight feet down. I'm literally seeing the bottom. Um, you don't you don't get that up in New Jersey, as an example, New York. It's no. typically you get about a foot and a half to two feet is pretty good. Right. So you want to get so you want something that's going to move the water, send the vibrations out, which is why the paddle tails, um, the paddle tail gulps work really well if you're using gulp baits. Um, you know, the, the jerk shads, because they get a little bit of vibration going out there, the grub tails really get some some vibrations out there. That's my answer, though. I don't know if you agree with that, um, but that's when I would do it. The dirtier the water, the bulkier I'm going. But generally speaking, I want to stay sparse. Um, which is why I like those, these bucktails that you tied up for me, there's some volume there, but there's not too much. And that to me is the general all purpose type of bucktail to use for the standard conditions in New Jersey and New York. I, I can agree to that. Um, the only other reason, um, I would consider going to a plain jig head and gulp is wreck fishing, like out in the ocean. Um, you know, you, you don't want to be losing them, them bucktails, six, seven, eight dollars a piece, depending on how big they are, you know, where you can get a pack of jig heads. They're a little bit cheaper. They're still going to work, maybe not as effective. But usually once you when you find them on a wreck, it's game on no matter what you throw at them. So um, but back bay, I I very rarely carry anything other than bucktail. Um, you know, I tried doing the Skinner method uh, for a couple of years with the teaser on top with a you know plain jig head. Um, I, it didn't work for me. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I just, I can't figure out how to jig a rod right now, <laughs> but <laughs> it just never did. Um, bucktails always produce always. So that's, yeah, kinda... they do. And I think, I think it's fun. I give, I give Skinner a lot of credit because he has, you know, the Skinner rig also known as the rig that we all use growing up <laughs> our entire <laughs> lives that our grandparents were using before he was born. Uh, but he has made it his own and I, I tip my hat to him. Um, Absolutely. You know, bucktails for flounder is not something that came along with John Skinner. Uh, I remember, you know, in the seventies fishing with bucktails for fluke. Um, they were a little different uh, than the ones that we use now, but um, yeah, uh, the Skinner method, I, I I think it's great. I have trouble with it, especially the rapid jigging. I don't have the Popeye forearms. Um, yeah, I actually, it's... I have tennis elbow over <laughs> here and I have carpal tunnel over here. So my thumb and four, my pointer finger, I can't feel. <laughs> so no, nah, there's repetitive things. I'm more of a, you know, just keep it moving type of guy. Yeah. I, I try to keep it methodical. I try to, I try to feel the bottom. I don't, I don't want to like reel it up a foot off the bottom and just, you know, bounce the rod. I, I want to know, you know, the, the contours and, um, you know, get that, that you want that bait as close to them as possible. I mean, everybody's seen the underwater footage, you know, they'll come up, they'll chase up, but they, they're, they live on the bottom. Um, yep. Especially when conditions are tough because I, I don't, I'm sure you've caught flounder that have their bellies are covered in mud. You know, they're laying down there and they're not, they're not up in the, in the water column at all. They're, they're right smack on the bottom. They are, they are. As a matter of fact, and you can catch them top water, but it's got to be really shallow <laughs> and they will, they will chase all the way up to the top. Um, Listen, I'm holding but, you to a top water trip. All right. So, it's, so yeah, I was, I talked about this um, on a, on a, a podcast earlier this year and, and we were talking about it and it's really the, it's the flats next to a, a pretty decent drop off in the spring when the water's still pretty cold, but you get a nice sunny day and you got a mud flat. They will move right up onto that mud flat and sit on the top there, kind of sunning themselves. And when you pull those things out, they are covered in mud. I mean, it's just stuck to them, you know, and what's funny is it won't even come off if you grab them. Uh, the mud is that stuck into their slime that it, it just stays there. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, I heard yeah. you on the, the Tide Chasers podcast talking about right. that. that. That got me. That got me, that that piqued my interest. I'm, I'm definitely yeah. want to get the kayak out and try it. Yeah, if you have a fly rod in a, a very small popper, I'm talking small, like a two inch popper, it, it'll it'll work. Um, but it's not something I do for a full day. It was you know I, I was actually <laughs> practicing when I learned that you could do it. I was practicing casting a fly rod. Uh, we've got another question in the chat, uh, from John Hutchinson. <laughs> Hooks, what size should be used? Is smaller better than large hook and the length of the shank? We both have opinions on this. Um, I actually yes, don't know yours though. So let, let's hear yours first and then I'll jump in with, with my thought on it. One second. Yeah, go, go ahead, man. <laughs> A lot of thoughts. So hooks, 
hooks, um, they're you got to use quality hooks. Um, I've I've had hooks that you know I've I've straightened the shanks on the old Duratin, um, the silver old Mustad hooks that have been around a hundred years. You'll straighten one of them out on, on a decent fish, no problem. Um, the stuff that we're using uh, with our jigs, um, we're using the Mustad uh, black nickel hooks. They're forged hook. They're a lot stronger. Um, I mean, I'll snap line before I, I break a hook. Um, and that's what, that's what I would rather, you know, I'd rather that be what happens than, than a jig failure because having a jig fail, nor one makes me, you know, me and the company look bad and it's, it creates an angry angler, you know, um, as far as size and length, um, I try to use the biggest hook we can fit, uh, in the molds, um, so, you know, certain molds will recommend using a five odd or a six odd, and I'll try to step it up. Um, there's molds that, uh, that we have that I've actually modified uh, with a little angle grinder to uh, get in there and, and fit a bigger hook, um, you know, just to use. Uh, it's, it's, it's called a Don jig. It's designed for, um, for the bigger sluggos and uh, the Zoom flukes. Uh, it's a three eighths head, but it has a seven on hook. So it's, it's a monster. Um, you know, I, I prefer a longer shank. Um, this one here is on a, uh, I believe it's on a five aught hook. Um, oh, if I held it up high enough. Um, so you can kind of see where the jig head stops. I, I should have brought some bear jigs, uh, but you can see where the, where the uh, bait keeper is. Um, so you have a, a, a decent amount of hook um, protruding. And then you also kind of want to match your bait size to your hook as well. You know, if you go with, you know, you put a big giant, you know, seven, six inch um, gulp on here, you're going to have a lot of tail. You know, they're going to be chomping at the tail before they get the hook. Um, you know, I think, Rich, you have some with with the bigger hooks. You have the, the ones with the seven aughts. Um, yeah. You know, and they get, you're going to get hook point contact before you get, you know, more contact with the fur and stuff like that. So. Yeah, and that, that's why I like them. I'm, I'm going to scroll some pictures um, of you and, and some of your products and everything so people can see it as, as we continue to go through here. I, I personally like the, the – now, this is my personal preference. And, again, I remember I made my own, you know, a, a well over a decade ago I was making uh, my own and, and testing them out, and I found that I really do like the longer shank. Um, I tend to use bigger baits. Um, I'm not uh, – I'm not necessarily looking for the biggest fish possible, but I am looking for uh, the bigger ones. I, I would much rather catch no fish than a hundred. Well, no, not no fish. <laughs> I'd much rather catch one big fish and trade off uh, 15 shorts and not catch those. Right. So to me, that's, that's a, that's a good day. Um, and I believe that the, the longer shank allows two things with a fluke specifically um, I think it works really well with the shape of their mouth um, because fluke do come up and they short strike a lot. They'll, they'll see where that fluke is right there. Um, that's actually how it'll grab. Uh, it'll grab that hook. It'll grab that bait. It'll kind of grab onto the end and kind of mouth it. Right. And that's why with an artificial, you set it the second you feel it because it's got it in its mouth and you got to try to set it right away because it'll spit an artificial. And I feel like the longer shank gives it a better opportunity to actually engulf the hook at the same time that it mounts it the first time. Um, so, th so that's what I'm typically going to do. I'm going to look for the bigger, um, not necessarily the bigger hook, but the longer shank. Um, but, but to your point, you know, they're, they're quote unquote, just flounder, but you, you need to make sure you have a strong hook on those, mm -hmm. right? It has to be a strong hook. Um, so, you know, I, I love the hooks that you use the Mustad, um, the forge hooks that they're, they're, they're great. Um, but that's my thought on it. You know, I, I just, I personally just prefer the longer shank. I think it, it fits better. It gets into that mouth a, a little bit easier uh, because, you know, they don't have to take as much of the bait in order to get the the hook uh, pointed into the, into their jaw um, as they would with those short shanks, which you see on, you know, I'm not going to name the names of all these companies, but there are some that that's really all they have are these really short jigs. Um, these really short shanks and uh, to they're, they're, they're on worthless that, on that picture you have on the screen. Now that's the, that, uh, to the right, those are those giant ones, um, that I was talking about with that really big seven on hook. Let me go back here. Yeah. Oh. On the, this one right here. 
Yeah, right there on the right hand side. Um, that's a three eighths head, and I mean, you can see how how big that hook is. You know, yep. they're they're going to grab that hook before they they get anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, hopefully that that answers the question. Um, let's see the other questions, uh, John. Uh, I fished with John before. Great guy. Uh, I, he's caught him on a teaser and the single bucktail. Uh, Andrew doesn't have as much luck with the uh, the Skinner method. Uh, always the teaser. How about braid versus mono? The impact mono has on keeping in touch with the bottom. Um, which again, for fluke fishing specifically, it, that's the key. You got to keep in touch with the bottom. What's your thought on that? Uh, so I use a fluoro leader. Um, everything I um, I'll tie a, you know, an Albright and I'll use probably, I mean, if the length doesn't really matter, I'll use probably 18 to 20 inches of, of fluoro. Um, my rods are spooled with 25 pound power pro. Um, I go a little on the heavier side just in case I run into, you know, uh, you know, whatever towed you around the bay the other day. Um, I want to be able <laughs> I, I to fly another one of those yesterday <laughs> too, by the way. <laughs> so I always, I definitely want to have, you know, I want to have the muscle to fight them. Um, so I'm, I'm using fluoro. Um, I don't, I don't think that really affects your ability to, uh, keep, you know, hold bottom. Um, you know, you're depending on the rod, you know, the rod has a lot to do with it too. You want a rod with a sensitive tip. Um, you know, you so you feel it all the way through the blank. Um, I've been using, uh, I just started using jigging world rods. Um, and so far I'm in love with them. Um, they're very sensitive. You feel a lot. Um, I was using a Fenwick rod before, uh, the HMG Insure, which is an all around awesome rod and I'll never get rid of them. Um, but I think a rod, I think the rod has a lot more to do with your feel on the bottom than, than your line and your leader combo. Yeah. I, I personally, I have switched over to, I, I use braid on everything. Um, one thing that I do do, um, which is kind of why maybe some people have seen in some of my videos, it happened again yesterday, uh, is I will break off sometimes because I use the lightest braid I can. It's typically 10 or 15 pound braid. Um, it cuts the water. It's very thin compared to mono. Uh, and, and I feel like it, it helps the, the lead get down quicker. And then I actually use a uh, 10 to, I, I, for 90% of it is a 20 pound mono leader. And I'll use anywhere from, uh, depends on if I'm going to put a teaser on there with that, that dropper loop or not. Uh, but I'll use two to three feet of it, mainly because I tie it on with an FG knot. And when I'm out in the kayak, it's a pain in the neck to tie an FG knot uh, <laughs> because I steer with my left hand. Um, and I don't want to just sit there and drift and tie a knot. I, I tie when I'm moving to another spot to save time. Um, but Hey, the channel's all about, you know, more fish and hey, less time. Right. So I don't waste a second when I'm out there. Listen, um, I'm guilty of breaking off and tying directly to braid. I, I, I have no shame. <laughs> so, so I did that, uh, actually, um, a couple of weeks ago, I, I, another video I had up was, uh, I went down to the Chesapeake with, uh, my buddy, Randy. <laughs> And we just wanted to see what was out there. And I, and I didn't retie. And I had about a, a liter about this long. And I was like, ah, screw it. <laughs> so I just put a, I just put a, a jig head on there and a paddle tail. And we were trolling. I picked up a Spanish mackerel on that. Thank God it didn't bite any. It actually, I hooked it and it came out and ended up hooking it in the head, which I think saved me because, you know, it stayed away from the teeth. But uh, yeah, that, I actually have a video of that pulling in a Spanish mackerel with zero leader on it, just straight to braid on 15 pound braid. Hey, if it's, if it's stupid and it works, is it stupid? <laughs> exactly. I, for me, it just saved me time. I didn't have to tie up and and, and head out. Um, but yeah, so I think, the, you know, the, the biggest thing for me is you definitely get more sensitivity out of braid for your main line. Um, you can definitely feel a little bit more in there. Um, but once you introduce that fluoro and that mono leader, you're going to lose a little bit of that. But I, I use the braid to get it down to the bottom. I, I think it helps to hold it a little bit better than mono. Um, so that, that's just my personal opinion. With that said, you know, I've caught thousands of fish on mono mainline and uh, fluoro uh, leaders. Um, I've even caught a lot of flounder on wire leaders when I was really young. I would just take whatever was pre-tied and I just grab wire leaders. So it, it can all still work. Um, Absolutely. 
Yeah. So Andrew is also asking, what's the difference between the hair and the silicone? Um, and when would you use them? Um, I think the hair and silicone is going to be more of a personal preference type thing. Um, you know, I prefer, I'm a bucktail guy through and through. Um, we do have, we do offer silicone skirts for things. Um, I don't, I haven't really fished with them too often. Um, I should probably give it a better shot. Um, but I'm, I'm just stuck on the bucktails. Um, you know, it's, you're going to get action no matter what. Um, but I feel like the bucktail, uh, in the way it's tied versus the way a skirt's tied, um, it moves more water and it creates more, like you were saying, it, it creates more sensation on that lateral line and it gets, you know, it's, it, it emulates a, a real bait fish, whereas kind of the, the silicone is just a little all over the place and kind of, um, a little, like, it doesn't, it doesn't have as much density as a bucktail. Yeah. Um, I would agree. I know I say this is somebody who has used silicone extensively. Um, last season, I, not this one that just ended, uh, yesterday but the last year in 2020 i used it almost exclusively and i had a great year um out of the two i prefer the bucktail in in nearly every situation and quite frankly um the only time given a choice between the two that i would use the silicone is when there are are more toothy critters in the area so if i'm going through bluefish um or if or if there are uh yeah, it's really bluefish. You know, if there's a lot of bluefish in the area, I will definitely use the silicone um, because I think it holds up a little bit better. Um, you're more likely to not have it get caught in the teeth and and twisted out of the bucktail, so it doesn't it doesn't ruin it, right? So that's mm -hmm. more of a a durability thing for me. Um, but head to head, my personal preference has been, uh, and I think will always be, to have an actual real bucktail versus um versus a silicone in, in the vast majority of things now if you go offshore i wouldn't necessarily say that's true right the bigger you get the more silicone becomes to me a viable option right so if you're mm -hmm. if you're out there for tuna and you're going to use a big bucktail you know you're talking like a four ounce that you're really just hauling out there on a huge uh spinning gear i, I would actually go with the, with the silicone there uh, I think it holds up really well and it works really well for getting the bait on the hook. One bad thing about bucktails um, versus silicone is if you ever try to take a gulp off or a soft plastic with the bucktail, you have to know how to take it off. Otherwise you're going to rip the fur right out. Um, yeah. The, the fur gets caught up under the, the hook uh, barb. Yeah. So when you say with it, yeah, this is a little pro tip for everyone. So when you have a gulp on there or a soft plastic coming off of here, make sure before you take it off, just grab it all and just pull it out of the way. So you're pulling it off on a bare hook. Otherwise, it'll start to pull all the hair off and you're going to end up losing a whole bunch of the top of the top of the, the jig. So um, imagine doing that when you when you've got a big, you know, nine inch plastic uh on something offshore that you're you're trolling or or you're tossing out at, at mahi or um, or tuna or something like that. You got or sharks. You know sharks. You you'll sometimes throw a bucktail with a big half mackerel on, or a big mackerel on it. Um, you definitely I would use psyllium for that. So hopefully mm -hmm. that that helps Andrew. Um, those are that's my opinion on it. Um, yeah. So so let's go into a little bit about presentation. Um, what what are some of the things that you think about when you're making a jig with the presentation and and uh, that you consider before tying it up? Um, I mean, it really depends on what what the order is, what the customers you know looking for. Um, you know, most people give me you know a little heads up on what they're doing, um, and then you know, we'll tie something you know to to whatever they whatever they want. Um, you know, every, every jig is different. There's no two that are the same. There's no two deer that are the same. Um, you know, even sections of hair on one tail are different. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's one of those things that you have to, you have to balance, um, 
you know, the, the, the hair that you're using, the hair that you're putting on and the way you're putting it on and tying it just to, to make sure that everything stays together. Because let's face it, it's hair, you know, we're, we're, we're cutting hair off a tail and, and tying it on. So you want it, you want it as, as strong as possible. You want it to stay together. Yeah, I, I thought that was really interesting. Uh, when we were, we met up uh, to go fishing a few weeks ago and we went back to your shop and you were showing me the differences between, you know, off the same tail you were showing mm -hmm. me the difference between the hair pulled from one section versus the other. Um, and then you tied up the one, the one uh, jig right, you know, right there. And uh, it was interesting. It, it was interesting to me. And I, there you go. <laughs> that's, that's it. The, that's the, that's the prototype, <laughs> that's the prototype. there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the prototype that we're going to talk about in, in, in a couple of minutes. Um, you know, what, what, what's your thought on using things like uh, the flash taboo, the tinsel, um, you know, hackles, that type of thing? Um, it's, it's all dependent again on what you're doing. So like, um, you know, my go-to this year was this, this guy I already showed, there's no flash in there at all. Um, dirty water conditions, you might want to add some flash that way it, it, it reflects a little bit of light, um, and grabs the attention better. Um, you know, a lot of lures are going to catch more anglers than fish. Um, right. unfortunately that's just a, a reality of, of our, you know, of, of our, our hobby capitalism. Here. Um, yeah, you gotta do it. Um, so it, it all depends. It really depends on what the customer wants and what they're, what they're, uh, comfortable with using in their style. You know, you said when you want, when you ordered those jigs that you have, you wanted some flash. So I, I threw some in there, but you know, like this one, this is a new color I'm, I'm playing with. Well, I'll be playing with for next year, but there's no flash in here. I, I don't, I don't prefer flash. Um, again, it's all, it's all dependent. That's that's what I like about doing this is you can make them to what people want instead of just settling for something off the shelf that you know anybody can have, right? Or you can. I, I think it's interesting, you know, when you look at the colors and everything. I, one one thing that I've that I think has been uh, beneficial. Well, two things when you talk about color, um, the the use of glow, uh, glow paints. Um, mm -hmm. I think ha have helped. Um, there have been day, I can tell you this, you know, this year I was out fishing with a guy. I didn't have any glow, uh, uh, bucktail heads or jig heads. He did. And I caught nothing. It was the, I think one of, and I got skunked twice this year and that was one of them. <laughs> he didn't, he was catching them. I, I didn't. The other thing is, uh, is interesting to me. And I, I'm going to put this back up real quick. Um, matching the colors to the gulp. So here's new penny. New penny to me is one of the most underrated colors that you can get of gulp. And, um, and I love the fact that, that, um, you know, you have the jig heads that are going to match that. So it's, it's more of a seamless type of, uh, presentation than you know what we'd normally do which let's say right here i've got the pink and the white and then i'm going to throw new penny on there well i'm just introducing all these crazy colors to it i'm going to throw chartreuse on there well maybe i should do this with chartreuse you know with a little bit of the green in there so um you know i, I think that's interesting so are, are you looking at uh matching more of the colors of the gulp as you go forward yeah um we do have if you check out the instagram there is um there should be photos of uh we have the full line like we can do match pretty much every gulp color uh blue fuse um the red uh that nuclear chicken uh new penny the salmon red. um yeah the the salmon um there's there's just so many colors like but we we have them all we can we can match you know whatever whatever you're looking to do we can we can put something together um, yeah, I, I think it's, it's something worth doing and worth trying out and, and we'll have some more conversations <laughs> about that. Um, Hey, if anything, you're going to look cool. So yeah, exactly. Hey, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you gotta buy the cool thing, right? Like nobody needs a $400 reel for, you know, kayak fishing as an example. Um, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't get one if you can afford it. You got to look good out there too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Looking good's half the part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got all the people fishing off of a, uh, off of a, 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 a pier using their van stalls, you know, and their uh, the thousand dollar rods. I had something I, I lost one. He lost one over the side. A bird like flew in his line and pulled the whole the whole shebang right over. Fourteen hundred dollars setup gone. 
that's no good. That's, that's, that's not no the good. first time it happened to him either. I felt so bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, you got to feel bad. I mean, that's that's just uh, that's just disappointing. I've I've lost some gear, but you know, as people have seen in my other videos, I tend because I kayak fish, I tend to go on the cheap side. So I, I get the decent rod and the uh, the budget reels, and they they seem to work out pretty well. And I have you know I have a few rigs on the bottom of the Raritan Bay right now. They're about a, they're about what six months old now. So maybe somebody can uh, can pull one out. Nice and muddy. Nice and muddy, and by this point dead, totally <laughs> dead. Um, let me let me ask you like personally, um, how how do you choose the colors that you're going to use when you're when you're packing up your tackle box to head out. Cause you, you have, unlike all of us, you have everything just sitting in your shop. So I mean, you pretty much have the world open to you for jigs and bucktails. So how do you choose? Uh, well, it's funny. Cause uh, our last fishing trip, I took one bucktail with me. <laughs> if you go through my tackle box, it's pretty sparse. Um, I was pretty disappointed when you said that too, by the way, <laughs> uh, you know, um, as far as colors go, chartreuse has always been like, my power color now like i have guys that are, will order um they're they're all about the pink shine so they'll do pink you know like the pink and white that's their power yeah. color um so actually in, in the slideshow you were showing i there was one picture of a fluke uh with a uh, minnow head and a blue and yellow um uh somewhere in there yeah, with the blue and yellow in its mouth um and that was the first one i ever tied of that color um and then I, yeah there you right go that there. one uh that was uh the last fish of last year that we caught um end of end of the season so going into this year i'm like there's something about this color i want to i just want to explore it so that's what i loaded my box with and then like i started changing things up like i, I started matching i don't know if you can see um but the head yeah. is chartreuse with a with with a blue you know splashes in it um you know, and this was just my, my, my power color for this year. I decided that's what I was going to use and, and it worked. Um, so. Yeah. I think, you know, one thing people should keep in mind. So again, there's nothing wrong if you use Spro or you use another brand. Um, but there's something that, to me, it's a whole different thing when you can start experimenting and you can actually say, Hey, here's what I would like to have made. Um, you know, like, like what we have done, um, and you get that, and then you get to test your own theories. You get to um, put in the time to to figure out, you know, what if I change this? What if I change that? And then from that point on, you have your your personalized uh, bucktails to go with. And and I love the fact that on your research trip, your first uh, check on this new color, you you pulled in that that big guy there. That, that's got to feel yeah. good. Yeah, it was it was that was a good trip. Um, but you know, I have I have you know my 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 partner that I started the business with. We're we're still you know very good friends. There's stuff he tries. There's stuff. Um, there's a guy with the sheep's head um, that you have in the slideshow. That's Mike. He uh, yeah. um, that's a nice sheep's head. He's he was fishing the prototype uh, for the new hook um, and caught that sheep's head you know on our tog jig. So it, it's definitely not just me behind this. You know, it's there's there's a there's a group of people. Um, you know, the, the Don jig is named after a buddy, Don. He's like, Hey, can you do something like this? So we did it. You know, it's, it's not, so don't, don't, don't assume it's just me behind all this. There's, there's input from a lot of people that, you know, that are very skilled fishermen. So, um, I, yeah, I, I think can't that's, take full, full credit. I think that's awesome. stuff. Yeah. I mean, you listen to your customers, you listen to the people that come and say, Hey, look, I have this idea. Let's give it a shot. And then they do come back to you and tell you how it goes. Right. Like people, Absolutely. people ask me, you know, can you help me find a spot in this area? And I tell them, as a matter of fact, I did it tonight with somebody he's heading down to North Carolina um, to an area that I fish. I said, the, the, I will send you everything that I can. The only thing you have to agree to is you need to tell me how you do. And they'll tell you. And then that's good feedback for me, too. Right. So now I don't have to fish there, but I'm going to look at it for for uh, over the next two weeks. What areas would I look at based on the weather trends that are out there? And I'm going to get that feedback. Right, it's so similar to how you get the feedback from every angler that goes out with your, with your gear. It's important, right? It's important because you can learn even if you're not the one on the water. Absolutely, yeah. And we we always ask for everybody to send us pictures. We try to post as much, you know, photos just to give guys shout outs for you know even just supporting us. I mean, we're just a, a shop in in, a, in my backyard, you know, um, you know, and to go up against the big guys and stuff. It's it's nice to get people, um, 
involved in it because it's they they have a sense of ownership you know if they come up with something that they like and it works you know that you know yeah i was the the vehicle to get it to them but it was their idea you know right so that, right. that's that's really cool um one more question uh is color more important than action i i'm gonna throw in ahead of time and say no um but ed really i think they're asking you so i want to chime in on that one i'm gonna throw a kicker in and i keep going back to the water clarity um you know i think if clearer water um you know maybe darker colors are gonna um are going to produce um clear you know it really depends. Clarity is number one, but number two, something I learned uh, actually just this year, and it and it, and it never really clicked in my head until someone actually said it. Now we we all subconsciously do it, um, but it, it clicked. In salt water, everything is always moving, uh, whether it's going with the tide, against the tide, moving around. Salt water, bait, and and fish are always moving. Uh, freshwater, you know, bass and and some of the other fish, they're they're just hanging out. They're, they're watching what's going on. They're not searching for food. Um, so I, I think um, when it comes to color versus action, I'm definitely going to go for action um, because they're, like I said, saltwater fish are looking to eat. That's all they're looking to do. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, and, and I think it's because what I have seen is that uh, you know, think about artificials you can throw out a pink shine artificial and if it's not moving you're probably not going to get the bite but the second you put the action behind that um you are going to get the bites you can throw out a pink shine and i've done that i do actually do this a lot if i if i am fishing a teaser or top and bottom i'll put on the bottom a grub usually and then i'll put a shrimp up top so let's say i'm, I'm throwing new penny grub um and a new penny shrimp up top the 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 grub has the action and i and i find that i'm getting more on the grub so um i i, I think you'll see it even if you have the same colors on generally the better action is going to outfish it that's just my opinion i can't prove it um uh, but but i like your thoughts on that as well you know everything's moving they're, they're used to seeing things moving and it needs to be something that's going to catch their attention maybe color can um but man if you have the right action you can get that reaction strike too uh, which mm -hmm. is especially with these ambush predators like a like a flounder, um, you can absolutely get it. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna vote also for uh, for action. Um, so let's go into to uh, uh, the tog. Oh, actually, here's a question. So sure. it's at the very beginning, um, and it's just being reminded in the chat here. Talk about the tog jigs. You also do the tog jigs. Um, but the, the question was, how, how does the dirty diaper color work? <laughs> well, the, fun, the fun, the funny part about that is the dirty diaper works very well. Yeah. Um, it can, again, a joke, you know, we try to keep stuff fun. And actually the guy that's asking about that is, is Justin. He's, he's the one that started oh, okay. this with me, <laughs> uh, just trying to be a, a wise guy. But, uh, um, and again, in your slideshow, there's a tog, uh, she, uh, it came in at six pounds and that was the test on the dirty diaper. Uh, we had went offshore, uh, to the Rex and AC, uh, and that one, I mean, I was able to make contact with that one. And that was the first, uh, the first fish caught on the dirty diaper. So, uh, needless to say, it, of it. it's an interesting I, color. It's, um, uh, I didn't, I don't have any with it's, me. It's the white, what is um, it? White with some gold fleck in there. It's white uh, with a green, uh, really dark, like uh, olive, uh, almost like a, uh, for lack of a better term, it looks like a dirty diaper. Um, and it has some red fleck in it too. So um, I don't know. It's just one of those, those off the wall ideas that, you know, we threw something at the wall and it, and it stuck. Um, you know, that's one, one of the many things that we're playing with color colors for tog jigs, I, I think are, are where it's at yeah i would uh well i gotta say this we went out and first drop on the tog jig that you gave me and i ended up pulling up a keeper first drop of the year for me um first keeper size threw it back but it was the first keeper size um and, and i do have to admit you you were kind enough to give me a bunch after that i lost them all yesterday <laughs> <laughs> you lost them too <laughs> lost them too oh, I, I was trying i was trying i caught a lot of tog they were all shorts but um yeah you know and the worst thing was the one that was really working for me i don't even know what the color is called it was like a, a black with some um uh 
maybe it was like a silver color in there as well, if I remember correctly. But I was yeah, getting yeah, that's, hits. On that's that. the dirty diaper there. Okay, I, I was getting hits on that every drop, and wouldn't you know, there was a rope about three feet underwater, and it got it got hooked into the rope. So I could there was no way, you know, in a kayak, I couldn't reach down. I couldn't do anything, you know, in that current right next to a bridge. It was a little dangerous. So I had to, you know, give it the salute, say thank you, mm-hmm. and cut the line as close as I could. But I ended up losing that. Yeah, disappointing. Well, the- the best part is, is they make more every day, so we, we can yep. we can we can say yeah. Yeah, we'll be talking about it. Um, all right, so so I wanted to say one more thing. Um, uh, you know, going back to some of the things that we were talking about, the the fluke jigs that that I've been showing, um, you know, with the thinner profile from the bottom and the top, and the you know you had the bulk on the side. Um, we've kind of teamed up on these, and mm-hmm. we'll be making these available. Um, to everybody, uh, these again are the the design that um, that I've used over the years when I was tying myself. These are much better. <laughs> these are much better than what I could tie, uh, to be completely honest. And most of what I did was actually just buying some, and then just uh, cutting it, cutting it down. So um, yeah, I, I mean, flounder season is over. Uh, as of yesterday in New Jersey, now Delaware, it's open all year. Uh, I don't know what Maryland is, Virginia. Uh, I don't know when New York ends. I think New York closed as well. I'm not, not hundred percent, but, um, yeah, we're going to be, uh, working together on, on getting some of those out there for people to use next season. Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. Um, you just got to figure out, you know, distribution and stuff like that, but we'll, uh, we'll get it together. And I, I think it's going to definitely up a lot of a lot of games for some people and you know get them on something quality that you know is going to last them multiple fish other you know other than don't get snagged and don't lose them but once yeah. they, if they stay on they're gonna they're gonna last a while so uh, it's, but i it's, i did really, look another shark yesterday with them um so frustrating uh i mean it it ripped off i what i did is i had actually a mullet on on the bucktail and i was jigging it um and I put it down in the rod holder for a second and it just took off and I took it out of the rod holder and it was obviously a shark and it just, it bit it, it clean slice right through the, the, uh, the jig didn't fail, but the, the leader failed. So that, that was actually my first jig that I lost yesterday and it was downhill from there. So, <laughs> yeah, so, so guys, uh, we're, we're going to work together, um, uh, to make some of these, you know, if you're interested in using the same ones that I'm using um, in the bucktail, uh, Captain Hanks is going to be is going to be uh, producing these, and they're going to be made available to everybody. Um, I can tell you, because of the way that it's shaped, uh, because of the types of hooks that that Ed uses, um, man, the the these are these are exactly what you want for fluke, especially the inshore. Um, you know, this is the, one of the smaller ones. Um, uh, it's just, it's, it's the right hook. It's the right angle. It's got the right bulk. It's got the right profile from underneath. It's thinner, like a minnow that's swimming by or, um, you know, anything that would be swimming over top of, of it. And then it's got the thick profile from the side. If you've ever watched a flounder, it'll, it'll go from side to side behind it. It'll look, it'll see it from the side. It first sees it from the bottom. And it sees it from the side, sees it from the side, and then it comes up from underneath and grabs it over top. So these with the the ball jig and that profile uh, work really well. Those will be made available. Um, coming up, we got plenty of time there to work out all the details on that. And actually, we won't talk about it now, but I've got another um, idea of something that I think will be incredibly successful that, that we need to do some testing on over the winter. Um, so I, I fish all year, so I'm happy to do the testing. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We'll uh, we'll get together on that for sure. Yeah. So um, let's see other things. Choosing bucktails for striped bass, Andrew. I'll just say real quick. I use the bulkier bucktails, right? Um, so you know the the thick all the way around um, hackles on there for me personally. If you're going to have somebody tie it for you, some feathers in there definitely help to really bulk it out. Um, Stripers have huge mouths and they inhale, right? They're not just going up and mm-hmm. biting. They're inhaling. They're inhaling all that water and they're sucking everything in. So you want something with some bulk. You want something that's going to stand up to those bigger um, 
artificial baits that you put on there. I mean, some people are throwing nine inch eels on those. Um, so that, that's what I would personally do. Um, and I would use something if you're, if you're not vertical jigging, something that has, unlike the picture up right now, there with the minnow heads, I would have something with the eye hook a little bit further forward so that you get a little bit more of a, a straight retrieve when you're pulling it in. Yep. And the only other thing I can add to that is, um, you definitely want bulk because, uh, it also controls your sink rate too. You know, um, like we were talking before about the, the different parts of the hair, um, lower on the bucktail itself um that hair is actually hollow so it'll flare more it'll, it'll put out more water so you want something uh typically with with those striper style jigs i'll tie the um the lower hair the hollow hair on the bottom and then i'll go around again on top with regular hair to keep it to flare it out so it keeps that bulk see that's awesome i, I don't think spurs are doing that mm, you think they probably. are maybe they are i don't know <laughs> my guess is probably not <laughs> my guess is they probably aren't for all i know they're using artificial bucktail at this point I, I don't know again i do have spro in my box i do use it when i'm sure i'm going to lose a lure and i or i'm just sick of losing lures um but yeah um don't want to bad mouth other things but it's I, i've talked to a lot of people and i've never had anyone show me the difference between the hair while making a jig in front of me and say, this is why I'm using this, feel this one showing me the, you know, the, the differences between them. So definitely appreciated that when we were going through. Um, so before we go, uh, so did you have something you wanted to add? No. Um, I mean, it's bucktails are, listen, if I can do it, anyone can do it. If you're interested in learning on your own, grab some jig heads, grab some deer hair and try it. Um, you know, if you want something that that's going to stand up and last, you know, it's, 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 it's a fun, it's fun. It's fun to do. I enjoy it. So it is, uh, but I will also caution people. There is a different, I, I know how to do them. I know how to tie flies too. <laughs> um, there is a difference between what I do and what you do. I mean, there, it's not mm -hmm. the same. Um, you know, I, I, on my Instagram, I have a picture of a Spro bucktail. Take a look at that and then compare it to these, you know, comparing it to yours. There's a difference. One has paint after using it a couple of times. Um, or a full season. And the other one is like the one on my Instagram, the Spro, it's just all lead at that point. So, I mean, it, you can do it. It can be fun. Um, but you know, there's a difference. There's, there's I can't give away all the secrets. No. I mean, I'm going <laughs> to encourage people to enjoy themselves and have fun, but I'm not going to give away all the secrets. Come on. Yeah. And I, I just like, I can make a rod, but I don't make rods anymore. Um, <laughs> I don't make my own tackle anymore. Um, I go to people that are, better at it, um, who enjoy doing it and have a passion for it because that comes through in the end result, unlike mine, which are typically tied as quickly as possible or the rods are put together as quickly as possible just so I can get it out on the water the next weekend. So, um, all right. So before we go real quick, do you want to let yes. everyone know where they can find you and Captain Hanks? Uh, yeah. Uh, so we are on, currently we're on Instagram and Facebook. Um, that's where the majority of our, our transactions are going on. Um, uh, we're working on a website. Um, like like I said earlier, we we kind of started this COVID during COVID time, so we weren't, you know, we weren't coming out guns a blazing. We were just trying to be the, you know, the sneaky guy coming in. So now things are starting to get you know take off. So we're gonna um, do you know website and and all that stuff down the road. Um, but like I said, Facebook, Instagram um, is Captain Hanks Tackle. Um, I have my my personal fishing page um, is SJ Saltfish. Um, on Instagram, I post up a lot of, a lot of catches and a lot of, um, you know, jigs that I'm using and, and what I'm using and, and you'll see in 90% of the photos is going to be this guy here. Um, you know, it's, it's fun man. I, I enjoy it. I love it. It's, it's life. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, so guys, you know where to check them out. One real quick question. Do you make any, uh, any ball jigs with the rattle? I do not produce them. Um, the only ones I've really seen maybe work are for freshwater. And even in our local waters, most jigs, there's, there's not, they more imitate crawfish and stuff like that. I, we don't have them here. So um, as far as for saltwater, I, I don't think the rattle is, is gonna, I, I think it's just fluff to be honest. 
Yeah, I, I've used it. I haven't noticed a difference, um, which doesn't mean that I wouldn't try it again. Um, I haven't noticed a positive or a negative in salt water. I also do not remember. Uh, I don't remember the brand, to be honest with you. Um, but I, I did try it. Um, I didn't notice anything. Um, but something to think about. Maybe it's something we could try out next yeah, year. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm not against trying new stuff. Um, yeah. I, I do think the rattle might be better suited for some top water, just to make a little more noise on the surface. Yeah. But underwater, I, I don't know that it's going to really do too much. But never know. Well, maybe we can try it when we go for top water fluke next um, or next spring. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. But, yeah, that'll be fun. All right, guys. Well, Thank you, everybody. Um, for those that are on the live stream, thanks for coming in. Thanks for the comments and everything. A like really helps uh, the the video uh, once it's posted after this for, for everyone to find. So uh, any likes, if you found any value, would definitely be appreciated. Um, we're going to have another live stream coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, the, the topic to be announced later, I'm working on getting a couple of people together for that. Um, so again, thanks everyone for stopping by Ed. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Everybody Absolutely. catch you in the next one. Tight lines. Have a good night.